So moving to Florida is a dream to many. People kind of idolize this whole living on the beach, drive to the beach five minutes there, go have margaritas by the pool. And uh, yeah, Florida does offer that almost all year round actually. Um, however, there's a lot of things that new homeowners and people moving to the area just don't know about. And this video is gonna be quick and it's just gonna be about the costs to be aware of that are different in your state. So some of these things are already here. Some of these things are coming up in the near future. Don't be sideswiped, put into the curb and fallen into a ditch. Here's what you need to know if you're thinking about moving to Florida. So I'm addressing five things that you must know. And if you're okay with that, please hit the like button. First and foremost, we're gonna start with property taxes. That is number one on my list. Property taxes are not the cheapest and they're not the most expensive. So depending which state you're coming from, for example, South Carolina or the Carolinas in general, uh, you're gonna have much higher property taxes in Florida than you do over there. But if you're coming from uh, New York and California, they're gonna be much lower. But where is it that you get punched in the face with your property taxes? First of all, homestead exemption. So here's the deal. If you are gonna be living here full time and that's your intention, and this is gonna be your primary residence, you may qualify you probably will qualify for what's called homestead exemption. It's a big discount on the valuation of your property that then gets uh, assessed you know with the millage rate and basically what I'm trying to say is your property taxes go down and if you're buying and you're not going to be living here you don't get this exemption. So for example if your snowbird is going to be here three four months out of the year you don't get exemption. If you rent your property out you don't get the exemption. You just get your taxes as regular. So what can you do to protect yourself? First of all, as soon as you buy a property and you are gonna be living here, file homestead exemption, easy. But where a pitfall comes in is when you're buying a resale, meaning not, not new construction, then the prior owner may have had homestead exemption for years and it limits how much the property taxes can go up every single year. And when the property is sold, it resets. And guess what? You're the guinea pig on the number that it gets reset on. It's based on how much you bought it for. So then you were under the impression that taxes were gonna be a certain dollar amount, and then they go sky high because you did not realize that they've been homesteading for 35 years, and they've had majorly discounted property taxes, which probably rings that bell when you saw that property, you're like, hmm, I wonder why these property taxes are so low on this property. Homestead exemption, a good real estate agent would have explained this to you, but we know how that goes. So to avoid getting a big surprise with property taxes, just double check how long have they had homestead exemption, what is the millage rate for that area, and what would be the new assessed value, and then do the math. Your realtor should do it. Heck, I'd do it for you. Just reach out to me. The second way to get sideswiped on property taxes is when you're buying new construction because you're gonna look at the property taxes, you're gonna look back and you're gonna say, oh wow, this one only has like, you know, $450 worth of property taxes. Well, that's because it's not finished construction yet. It has to finish on the 1st of January of the year that you are buying. And if the construction happened over a year ago and it's still considered new construction because no one's ever lived in it, well, that's a different story. Then you might actually have the, pro the proper property taxes. But if you're buying a new contracted vacant land and you waited eight, nine months in order to get your property built, and then you get surprised with what property taxes actually end up being. And that expense could have been predicted. But if you don't have a good real estate agent that didn't tell you how to calculate this stuff, you're probably gonna be surprised as to what happened. And even if you didn't fall into either one of these two examples that I gave, you just bought a piece of property and everything's fine and dandy, and then you still can get surprised with property taxes. And the reason is because the property taxes for homestead exemption always takes a full year to recognize. So since property taxes come out at the end of the year, meaning you don't prepay them, you pay them in arrears. Well, at least the ad valorem part of it. Anyway, you basically have to wait a whole year minimum to find out what your property taxes are going to be with your homestead exemption. And to make matters worse is if you have a loan. If you have a loan and your mortgage uh, servicer has been collecting a certain dollar amount, let's just say $200 a month towards the uh, property taxes in the escrow account, and then you end up having a shortage. Let's just say it's supposed to be $400 a month because of the 
whole homestead thing and all that. And now you have a shortage, you're gonna have to pay double the shortage amount. So your property taxes have changed by a certain dollar amount, but your escrow account is short by way more than that and they need to prepay. So basically what I'm trying to say is it's good to predict what your property taxes are gonna be so that you can start funding your escrow account accordingly. Let's talk about the second thing that could absolutely punch you in the face if you're buying real estate in Florida and you are not aware of this. And this would be condos. So if you don't know, in May of 2022, there was a new law that was passed for all condos that are three stories or higher. Now there's a little bit of lack of clarity as to exactly what if it's a first floor is a parking garage and so on. But either way, if you got three stories or more, or if your complex has a building that has three stories or more, you now qualify under some new laws. And the old owner may or may not have known about it. They probably did because they talk about these things in the meetings. So the first thing you have to watch out for is this. You have to double check that the reserves are adequate for all the major items that the condo is responsible for maintaining. Which major items? Good question. The law is not very clear just yet on what exactly needs to be fully funded. But some of these small, really old communities have been kicking the can down the road. And what I mean by that is that they have not been fully funding. They just put it up to a vote and they're like, hey, our roof is 15 years old. What are we doing? Are we gonna go and have a special assessment and fund this new roof job? Or are we gonna vote to say no? later. Well, they just keep voting and voting and voting no. They kick the can down the road and unfortunately that ends up meaning that the new owner is going to be responsible when that special assessment comes. Now that is called the milestone inspection so go check that out. And the other thing that is changed in that same law is that any condo three stories or higher also has to do a structural inspection if they are 20 years or older. If they're within three miles of the coastline I believe it's 25 years if they're further than three miles from the coastline but let's be real almost everything is within three miles of the coastline. So what's important about that? First of all this law goes into effect on January 1st 2025 and I say for now and the reason and I say that is because they're probably going to vote to change that law and make it go a little further out because there's not enough structural inspectors out there to do the job. Anyway, long story, I do have a video all about this whole thing. So long story, I'm basically going to tell you what you need to watch out for. So you need to make sure that the reserves are very well funded and that they're already discussing about the plans. What are they going to do when the time comes that they need to do a structural inspection. You don't want to be hit with a special assessment and this new law affects over 1 million condo units in the entire state of Florida. Most of them are beachfront and you don't want to get stuck with a problem that's going to cost you a lot of money. Let's move on. Number three is insurance and boy this is a big one. I don't really know how to start explaining this one because this is a 35 minute video by itself. So in a nutshell here's what's happening. Florida gets the most hurricanes out of any state and out of all the states out there that and you have insurance claims on all types of reasons like tornadoes, natural disasters, theft, hurricanes, everything, Florida pays out 79% of the nation's money. Yes, you heard that right. 79% of all the money paid out by insurance companies is paid to properties in Florida. So no surprise, we now have 14 carriers that have decided to leave the state. So getting insurance is really difficult. And most of it was caused by this whole roof ripoff thing that happened. If you have questions about that, let me know. Just reach out to me. My phone number's everywhere or write me an email. Um, but if you have have been affected by this please just hit the thumbs up I kind of want to see what's going on how many people were affected by insurance rates skyrocketing because of these roof ripoffs now the good news is that if you pay for your property and you do not have a mortgage you are not required to have insurance but the bad news is that's a bad decision now unfortunately when we have a major hurricane there are hundreds if not thousands of people who are filing for claims so getting paid out also takes really long and the question is who's going to pay for the temporary housing that you need to rent when everyone else is also needing temporary housing so guess what happens price gouging everything goes up in price you're waiting for your insurance claim 
for a long time. And yes, the federal government does step in and the state government does step in and provide funds for specific events such as Hurricane Ian. But overall, dealing with insurance is a pain. Now, to make matters worse, even though we have had 14 carriers leave the state and no longer write policies, what that's done is that's caused a lot of policyholders to go to citizens, with, which is officially you know, the insurer of last resort. And what that means is that I believe they're funded by the government, by the Florida government. So when you can't get insurance with any regular carrier, then you can go get it with citizens, most likely. There are a few exceptions that you can't. For example, if you have a roof that's over 25 years old and you have cloth wiring, anyway, that's one of the weird parts that no one will carry insurance on those properties. However, citizens' policies went from before the pandemic, there were about 500,000 policies, and now they're at 1.2 million or something like that. Don't quote me on those numbers. But basically, what that's done is that's put a major burden in case of a catastrophic event. So if something really bad happens, what do you think is going to happen to citizens? They are going to go belly up. They're not going to have the money to actually do it. So after Hurricane Ian and Hurricane Nicole, what they've done is the following. They said anyone who is a new policyholder with citizens is going to be required to purchase flood insurance. So now when you may not be in a flood zone, um, you may still be required to get flood insurance. So this is an additional cost that you might get hit in the state of Florida. So this really does apply to older homes that are over 20 years old. If you have a new construction, pretty much don't have to worry about that at this point. Right now we can get really good rates for insurance policies for new construction homes. And one last thing about insurance that can really punch you in the face about getting caught up with a major expense is flood insurance. I just mentioned it briefly, but most people don't have flood insurance. If they have a regular mortgage and they are not in a flood zone they are not required to get it and the majority of people don't get it I probably say five ten percent of people maybe get that so what happens when your house floods and a lot of people are under the wrong impression of what that means so a flood for flood insurance purposes means rising waters so if a hurricane comes and all this water just comes down comes down comes down and the water all around your property rises and enters and penetrates the property and messes up your drywall and your flooring and your cabinets that's flood insurance and you're gonna say wait I thought that was hurricane because it was the hurricane no no not according to insurance makes no sense to me but that's how it works so it's be, even though the hurricane brought all the water that's flood insurance and most people are not covered by it it happened with Katrina in uh, New Orleans it happens all the time in almost every place that usually doesn't get a lot of rising water and people are not insured for that particular problem and when you have a flood that expense is huge so I just did a quote on my property to see how much new uh, water flood policy would be and I uh, and mine ended up being about a thousand dollars and I just kind of thought hey let's do the quick math. If I have a flood, how much is the repair going to cost? It's under 2,000 square feet under air plus garage plus all of those other little spots. And if I have a flood, I'm going to have to do the floors, the cabinets, four feet of the wall, uh, probably some exterior and insulation and uh, siding and a whole bunch of furniture and so on. And how much is that going to cost? Well, I'm going to say at least thirty forty thousand dollars right i say that to say this if it costs a thousand dollars a year what's the probability of a flood happening in the next 30 years to break even on that and then the real question is what if prices go up which they will so it's not only is the insurance going to go up but the cost of repairing it is going to go up so really it's a really good deal to get flood insurance and some places are required to get flood insurance if you have a loan but once again if you have your property paid for you are never required to carry any kind of insurance you can self-insure although it's not recommended by pretty much anybody all right number four cost that i'm going to talk about that you really have to watch out for is maintenance so brand new houses don't really qualify as much but resales properties that are not brand new they have deferred maintenance there's always some sort of deferred maintenance even if the house is seven years old and looks absolutely brand new even if the house has never been lived in for the first seven years there's still deferred maintenance and what do i mean by that so first of all let's talk about the roof right let's just say that your roof on your your six hundred thousand dollar house is going to cost uh, i don't know say a thirty thousand dollars to replace and you're going to say well why would i replace it it's not even broken well the insurance 
insurance company is going to make you do it because they've had roof ripoffs. So they're going to make you do it and you're going to have to pay for it. So if you take $30,000 and you divide it by the, the big question is when are they going to make me replace it? And the most probable answer is within 15 years of it being installed. So you're already almost halfway, you're seven out of 15 years into the roof's age, even though it's 30 year shingles, right? Now tile roofs are a little different, metal roofs are way better than either one of those, but still you're going to be in a position where you've already used half of the life. So out of that $30,000 expense to replace the roof, where's that $15,000 coming from that is already been used? Did you get a discount on the purchase to do that? Probably not. So you're gonna get hit with a required roof replacement at some point in time. You're not gonna have the cash, the money to do it. And then you're gonna have to make a decision. How do I get this done? And the real topic here that I'm talking about isn't just about the roof. It's really about all the deferred maintenance items. So appliances last for 10 years. Uh, air conditioning units last for 12 years. Hot water heaters for five, maximum 10 years. You know, electric doesn't go as bad, uh, doesn't go bad as often, and neither does plumbing. But you still have a lot of maintenance items that you're gonna need to maintain and repair. And a lot of them are probably already past its half-life, you know? They've already used over half of the life that they have originally. And same thing with the pool, right? If you have a pool and it's like 15, 20 years old, you're gonna have to resurface it. It's gonna cost you ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 to resurface that pool, depending on the type of pool it is. But still, that's once again, you know, like what, a thousand dollars or $700 uh, a year on that, right? That you have to put away into some sort of fund and you're gonna get hit with these expenses. And it's a little here, a little there, but once you start adding it all up, a lot of Florida, home buyers don't understand the cost of ownership in Florida. And it's some of these things do apply to other states, but some like insurance is very unique to Florida itself. The same with property taxes. That is something that is very particular to Florida. And lastly, number five, let's wrap this up. And if, it's, if this has been helpful so far, please click that like button or just please share it with someone. I'd really appreciate that. But number five is about the contractors. So Florida, unfortunately, uh, let's just say uh, the people in Florida don't always have integrity. There's, I found that up north, people have much better integrity when it comes to running their business. And here, there's a lot of ripoffs. Now, that's not to say that there aren't many great people that do a great business and contractors that you can trust. But I am saying that there's going to be a bunch of, you know, Craigslist, fly by night, you know, Joe Schmo who, who comes to Sarasota one week, goes and collects a whole bunch of money from deposits, then goes to, you know, Vero Beach on the other coast and collects more deposits from other people and kind of never starts the job. Then you start looking them up, the company never exists, they just ran off with your money. So this kind of stuff does happen and that is an ex additional expense but it's 100% preventable. So one thing that you can do is get referrals from people like myself. Like I've been a landlord 20 years. I've been a real estate agent since 2004. I have plenty of contractors that I have vetted and that I trust. So you don't just go and call the first person. Don't just hire the first roofer. Roofers do it too. Just go and get your quotes, get some referrals, go check out other jobs they've done and don't get yourself in a pickle because you didn't do enough due diligence. Hey, sorry for talking so fast, but that is the video today. So if you have any questions, give me a call. My number is 941-888-SOLD. I'm a real estate agent in Sarasota, Florida. Check out this next video coming up.